Hi, I'm Matt Sainsing, Assistant National Communications Director for DAV, and I'm here with Rick Albrecht, a retired Army Lieutenant Colonel and DAV Life member out in South Dakota. He answered the nation's call around September 11th, 2001, and volunteered with the Red Cross in New York City just months after 9-11. Rick, thank you very much for being with me today. Uh, thank you, Matt. Glad to be here. Walk me through what your day was like on 9-11. Where were you that day? What do you remember? I was actually doing some substitute teaching and I had uh, stayed up late the night before. So I actually slept in. And when I turned the news on, that's when I saw the first tower that was ablaze. And uh, I, I, I just couldn't believe what was going on. Uh, I was just glued to the TV. Um, I had been involved with some terrorist things, uh, monitoring terrorist activity and that kind of stuff in the military and the intelligence field. Um, when the tower was, I saw it burning, I'm like, how long is it gonna be before this thing collapsed? And I know that was always a question in everybody's mind whether or not it was going to collapse or not. But in my mind, I thought it was going to, and I, I was hoping and praying that the people were being evacuated at the time um, and then continuing to watch. And then as the second tower got hit, it was like, you know, it's like, how much worse can it get? Well, it can get a lot, it got a lot more worse with the plane hitting the Pentagon as well as the Flight 93 United that uh, crashed in Pennsylvania for sure. Uh, now, when did you travel to New York City? I, I think this was in December, correct? Correct. I was a substitute teacher at the time, and I recognized that there would be a lot of people who would initially volunteer to go out there. But I also knew that this was going to be a long term thing, and that there would be several iterations of volunteers who were going to be needed. And so I waited until December when I would have a Christmas break from substitute teaching. Um, hmm. I figured that a lot of people wouldn't want to give up their holidays. Uh, I was a single guy, so I said, you know, I can actually do this and make a difference over the holidays. What motivated you to travel all the way from South Dakota to New York City, and how long were you there? This was a three-week deployment. Normally for the National Response Team for the Red Cross, you're out for three weeks, and that's what this one was as well. Um, as far as motivation, it was just a call to serve. I think that's the reason I joined the military to start with back when I was 17 as well. We had no money in the family for, for scholarships or college or anything like that, and I'd always been impacted by Kennedy's uh, inaugural speech, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And that just has always stuck with me. Interesting you say that. I'm actually wearing John F. Kennedy's socks right now. I won't show the camera, but definitely for sure. Yeah, you said you volunteered with the American Red Cross, part of its National Disaster Response Team, and you worked out of a family assistance center at Pier 94 right in Manhattan. What did you do and what was your purpose? Pier 94 was the largest center there in New York City. I believe there were a dozen centers. And what I did was I met with families who had either lost their jobs or lost their homes. And we would write uh, checks or give vouchers for groceries, rent and utilities to make sure that people could stand on their feet. Initially, there was such an overwhelming response that the, the vouchers were only for a 30-day 30, 30 period. And when I got there, that was extended to 90 days to make it easier for the families so that they didn't always have to come back and go through uh, the paperwork uh, to get financial assistance. The um, uh, local Red Cross dealt with the families who lost loved ones. Mm. And then there were also the uh, emergency response vehicles that sort of food out the sides or in the back. Uh, they were there down at ground zero um, to provide refreshments and food for all of the people there uh, doing the recovery and the search operations. Uh, and then you also had mental health workers there to deal with the families as well. For sure. Did you yourself ever go to ground zero and see the wreckage? Ground zero itself was cordoned off. Uh, that was uh, protected by uh, National Guard and local authorities. Uh, so you couldn't get close. And, and there's all, you also wanted to have a sense of respect for the search operations that were going on, respect for the families. There was a memorial that uh, people built uh, right next to Ground Zero that family members were able to go to where they had cards and letters to loved ones uh, that were still, um, that, that had not been recovered. Absolutely. What was the energy like in New York City in the weeks and months after? this terrorist attack? One of the major things I noticed, I've been to New York City before, was that the city was almost eerily quiet. Mm. Didn't have the honking of the horns or anything, not a lot of the congestion uh, on the subways. Everybody was very silent, very reserved. Um, it was kind of a haunting feeling. Uh, whenever I would take the subways to go down to uh, the work, uh, I would always introduce myself as who I was. Hi, Rick Albert. I'm, I'm with the Red Cross. I'm here to help. And that automatically opened up the doors and got people talking. You know, thanks for being here. They were just uh, ab absolutely dumbfounded. It, you know, it, it was it was sad. It was very it was a very solemn time. 
Absolutely. And in New York definitely is the nickname is the city that doesn't sleep. Right. And so it definitely had a character for there to be no honking or yelling or any of the sight, sights and sounds of the bright lights of the city. Uh, t- you're a substitute teacher. You were a substitute teacher on 9-11. Uh, tell me a little bit about this from our hearts to yours gifts that you received from students at uh, elementary school in Tucson, Arizona. Our hearts to yours. There was a, a teacher, and I've got the card here that even says what it is, that uh, Rebecca Carlton was an art teacher there in uh, Tucson, Arizona, and it was her second grade class that came up with these hearts. They're uh, hearts that were red, white, and blue striped. It was uh, like a, a ceramic material uh, with lacquer over the top. It was made into a Christmas ornament, and on the back, the kids had written, um, from our heart to yours, Manzanita School, Tucson, Arizona, love, and then their name. And I brought back all of those ornaments. I gave some, one to the uh, director of the Red Cross at that time. Oh, I've wow. got two that I still hang on my Christmas tree. And there was one that I was able to get into the hands of Rudy Giuliani when he came to Sioux Falls for a visit back in, I believe it was 2006. Wow, and uh, at the time, of course, he was the mayor of New York City. Um, and what did it mean to you to see students willing to help as a substitute teacher? It, it was very, very heartwarming. Um, I didn't deal with elementary school kids when I was a substitute teacher, but these were the ones that, uh, that, that I was most touched by. They had groups of kids dressed up as angels that came and sang to us one day, uh, all kinds of artwork that was sent in, Christmas ornaments of all shapes and sizes, colors and everything uh, were all sent in to us. Uh, they were sent into the families. There were truckloads after truckload after truckload of gloves and hats and scarves and everything to give to the families, but there was no place to put any of this. So they asked the volunteers, I said, please take some of this with you. And mm-hmm. since I was doing that, I said, I need to reach out to those who have sent this stuff in to let them know that it got here and that it made a difference. And you went back to South Dakota just in January in 2002. So you were just there for about a month, right? Um, what did you take from New York City back to South Dakota? What, what did you take away from this experience? You know, there was a lot of uh, solemnness, a lot of At the time, a lot of revenge, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration, anxiety. Um, What I brought back is that even even one person can make a difference. It doesn't matter what your age, what you're doing, Uh, like the kids sending in letters, the cards, family sending in things, uh, well wishes, letters, whatever. Anybody can make a difference. And I mean, I just made a very small difference. There were thousands of Red Cross volunteers that came. Other organizations were there as well. Um, government agencies, churches, lawyers, small business associations, Department of Logistics, uh, Salvation Army, everybody was there helping. And it was just that sense of unity that everybody came together uh, to help for a common cause. It was great to see America come together like that. Absolutely. I think unity in the in the weeks, days and months after 9-11 was absolutely something that we all, those of us who were there to bear witness it, remember and carry with us. Um, Lastly, thank you for being with me, but the last question is, what do you want other Americans to know about 9-11 and maybe your volunteer work there? Um, Anybody can be a volunteer. Uh, Even the most insignificant thing um, is important to someone. You're going to touch somebody's heart regardless, uh, so please reach out and try and touch somebody if we do have another disaster like this. Um, You don't need to do it at a national level. You can do it at a community level as well. There's thousands of opportunities wherever you live to reach out and to help everybody else. Absolutely, and it just takes one person to make a difference uh, as you did uh, just after 9-11. Rick, thank you very much for being with me today. Um, I'll give you the last word if you wanna say anything else. Hi, mom, hi, dad. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. Well, Rick, uh, again, thanks for being with me and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you very much, Matt. Thanks.